So I actually grew up in a suburb of Chicago and I've been living in Chicago as a grown ass man for many years. I've also traveled a bit in my life and every time I meet someone in a foreign country, they're like, where are you from? I say, I'm from Chicago. And every single time they go, oh, Chicago, Al Capone. And I go, yeah, fuck yeah, Al Capone. <laughs> the Al Capone that they're referring to is this one. I want that son of a bitch dead. I want him dead. I want him dead. I'm dead. Did with this what show? am I alone in this world? Did I ask no. you what you're trying to do? No, I did I ask no, you what you're no, trying to do? Please. I want you to get this fuck where he breathes. I want you to find this Nancy boy, Elliot Ness. I want him dead. I want his family dead. I want his house burnt to the ground. I want to go to the middle of the night. I want to piss on his ass. The Al Capone in this movie fucking sucks. The first 30 seconds of this movie lays out the whole plot for you. After all the fun, interesting things that happened in Al Capone's life, he was sentenced to prison for tax evasion in 1931. He then spent 11 years in prison. While he was in prison, his wicked case of syphilis advanced to neurosyphilis. Or what is neurosyphilis? Neuro... Syphilis? Neurosyphilis is a bacterial infection of the brain or spinal cord. It usually occurs in people who have had untreated syphilis for many years. So basically his brain is deteriorating. De deteriorating? Deteriorating, right? Deteriorating. Become progressively worse. Yeah. Eventually his mental state reached a point where he was no longer deemed a threat, so they just let him out of prison. He was then sent to his Florida mansion to live out his life while under close watch from the government. This movie covers the last year of his life in Florida in his mansion while his brain is slowly rotting away. Yeah. Tom Hardy is Al Capone. This isn't the Al Capone that you want to see in a movie. This is basically just a vegetable that stares at things and smokes a cigar. This is a man whose brain is degenerating. He doesn't have a grip on reality. I think Tom Hardy had an idea how to play this role and he tried it out and it failed. I gotta say, I think it's his worst performance. Just didn't work. I didn't like it. Can somebody please tell me why Tom Hardy feels it's necessary to create these weird voices of his that nobody understands? It's the next step of your master plan. Crashing this plane. Dude, you're an actor in a movie. All you have to do is change up the accent and make sure the audience understands you. But I don't want them to understand me. If they understood me, it wouldn't be any fun. <laughs> in this movie, he just makes weird noises and hawks loogies and does a horrible impression of that guy from Independence Day. Ma, ma, listen up. Get your stuff together and die head for an Don't argue with me, just go. David, why did I just send my mother to Atlanta? David! Oh my god. Oh my god. Tom, uh, let me down. And I'm very disappointed. Linda Cardellini, she plays Al Capone's wife, May. I actually thought that she was the best that this movie had to offer. She had a very good performance and did a great job with what she had to work with. She's a character with a good perspective that we can sympathize with as she deals with her husband that's going crazy. The only issue I had with her was her, her looks. Uh, she either looks too young or their son looks too old to be related. Uh, Noel Fisher is Al Capone's son in this movie. It took me one whole hour to figure that out. It wasn't until he was sitting by Al and was like, I'm your son, that I was like, oh. Okay. In real life, he's only eight years younger than Linda Cardellini, and you can tell. He doesn't look young enough, or she doesn't look old enough. They're just not a believable mother and son, all right? Okay. Matt Dillon is in this movie, and I'm not really sure why. They do a piss poor job of establishing him as Al Capone's friend, and then they do a piss poor job of establishing him as a plot twist. It makes no sense. Not Matt Dillon's fault just really poor writing. Okay, this is just an all around, straight up, bad movie. It's really bad. The defining characteristic of this movie is boring. I was bored out of my mind for an hour and 45 minutes. There were parts of this movie that they tried to make entertaining, but when those parts started, I was like, okay, this is either a hallucination or a dream, and sure enough it was. The shittiness of this movie starts and ends with Josh Trank. Do you remember who that is? He wrote, directed, and edited this movie. So all of the blame falls on him. Of the three movies that he's directed, two of them really suck. I mean, do you remember the last Fantastic Four movie? That was him. I'm not really sure what the point of this movie was. It seems to be the most uninteresting part of Capone's life. The only thing in this movie that I found slightly interesting was that Al Capone may have hid $10 million somewhere 
but they didn't really focus on that, and then it just fizzled out. Uh, that's lame. The idea of like a Al Capone treasure hunt is kind of fun. As a person that's genuinely interested in Capone's life, I would like to see a movie about his rise to power. Or at least a movie about him in Alcatraz prison while he slowly starts to lose his sense of reality. That'd be cool, huh? But we didn't get that. We got a movie where he's already lost it and he just sits around and stares at shit. There's not a lot of factual information about this period in Al Capone's life, so why didn't they just take that and fictionalize it completely and make it like a horror movie? An Al Capone themed horror movie? Where you don't know what's real and what's fake? That's kind of cool, right? We didn't get any of that. We didn't get shit. We got an hour and 45 minutes of this. Boring. It's boring as fuck. There is an FBI agent in this movie that compares Al Capone to Hitler, but offers up no information to make that comparison make sense. And that's like the first part of the movie trailer. Do you know what the difference is between Adolf Hitler and Al Capone? It was dead. Capone was like a king in Florida. Like, okay, Al Capone was this ruthless gangster that caused the deaths of 33 people. 33. So you got Al Capone, uh, like 33, maybe more. And you got Hitler, uh, six million. What the fuck are you talking about? That is lazy, shitty writing and you're treating your audience like idiots. People know that Al Capone was not like Hitler. Come on. They do a terrible job at establishing characters in this movie. I had no idea who 80% of the people were the whole time. Tom Hardy just seemed like he didn't want to be there. It was a very shitty performance, literally and metaphorically. The story was boring and it had a lot of plot holes and I just did not like it. I didn't like any of it. It's a bad movie. Bad movie. I rented it on On Demand. It was a waste of $10. It's a waste of time. Just don't watch it ever. Watch The Untouchables. The Untouchables is dope. I get nowhere unless the team wins. Team. When the movie was over, my wife was like, what's the Rotten Tomatoes score on this? And I'm like, I don't know, like upper 30s, lower 40s. And she's like, how'd it get so high? See ya, subscribe. But I don't want them to understand what I'm saying. <laughs> Uh, I'm pretty good, right? All I did was put on the mask. You're a big guy. For you. You're a big guy. For you.